Great. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Olivier, and this is Yarden. And together, we are the co-founders of Spate. Uh, we do data science to predict the next big consumer trends. So this started as a 20% project um, at Google, um, where we would use Google data to better understand consumer behavior. Uh, we were releasing reports, and every time we would release reports, we were getting like hundreds of emails from brands asking for more, and even offer to pay for it. But Google would not pursue this as a business opportunity. And so we decided to quit, and we started Spate. So what we learned as we were working at Google, we saw this big problem. Brands struggle to predict consumer demand. In fact, a typical product launch costs $71 million, and 80% of them will fail. This results in an annual total loss of $110 billion. Imagine you are a brand manager. You work in a big CPG company. You have to launch a beverage brand next year. Your typical research company will tell you that those three ingredients are trending right now. Which one do you pick? So I know this is a data audience, but we'll play the game together. So raise your hand if you think that ashwagandha, which is Indian Jingzen, is trending. Okay, pretty timid, but yeah. Raise your hand if you think that guava is trending and you will invest into guava. Okay, a bit, a bit more, okay, enthusiasm with guava. And what about kefir? I guess all the rest by default? Okay, great. <laughs> because it's too easy, you know. <laughs> I want to make it a bit more, uh, you know, challenging. Um, so, I mean, the good news is that you, you're in the field of data, and it's good because the majority of you were wrong. Turns out that ashwagandha is trending right now. Okay? And so what we do at Spate is that we leverage the power of data science in order to be able to quantify consumer demands and thus help brands take better decisions. So how do we do that? Um, our starting point is behavioral data. Uh, coming from Google, we work a lot with like Google search. And the idea here is that people don't always say what they do. And you will see in traditional surveys and in focus group, there is always this like, little bias, essentially. And I invite you to read this book. It's Everybody Lies. It's written by an ex-Googler. And it's essentially positioning Google search as a digital truth serum. You are essentially incentivized to tell the truth to Google because you want an answer to your, to your question. So we collect all this data. Uh, we run a lot of unsupervised uh, machine learning models. Uh, the idea here is that we are connecting new dots. We are not necessarily like industry experts, but we are like data experts. And we found out that by using those ML techniques, we are able to spot unknown behaviors, even for clients, thus feeding into the intuition, generating potentially new hypotheses, and helping them taking better decisions. And then finally, with the massive amount of data we, that we connect, collect, we have, I think, more than 3 billion data points right now just for the beauty space, we are able to see trends at a high level, so this is what we call macro trends, but we are also able to deep dive into like very specific granular trends, so like micro trends, this is how we call them, that are very like actionable. So this is typically what you would see in a dashboard. So sunscreen, for example, is trending right now. So it's very important, by the way, to wear sunscreen. Your face will thank you. And moisturizer. So <laughs> this is the tip for today. Um, and specifically, when it comes to sunscreen, we've seen this uh, micro emerging behavior around like a coral reef sunscreen, which is essentially sunscreen that will help the coral reef. And this is something you know, that is very variable for our clients. And so moving forward, here you go. Oh, sorry, here you go. <laughs> so how is Spate changing beauty? That's a big question. Um, for one, we're bringing data to Vogue. That's pretty awesome. Um, but we are identifying really new emerging trends for brands. And so to Olivia's point, to what Olivia was saying, we're looking at three billion data points. We're looking at understanding how consumers in the world of, 
of beauty are searching. And from that, we're able to identify these emerging trends. So as somebody in the crowd mentioned, we're seeing CBD. You guys already knew that. But do you know Bacuchiol? Bacuchiol? I don't even know how to pronounce it. Does anyone here know that? No. So yeah, so, oh, there was one person in the audience. Who needs data? <laughs> Um, but yes, yeah, so we're able to identify really, really small trends that are starting to pick up that even our brands haven't heard of, and we're able to show them that. And you know, whether we're going big or small, sometimes you can even, if you're in the world of beauty, miss some of the bigger trends. So can anyone looking at these images over here spot something in common across all of these images? Any thoughts? They're all women. Yes, that's a, that's a start. That's a start. <laughs> wigs. So all those women were wearing wigs. You might not even realize how many people on the street are wearing wigs. This is a trend that is happening, and it's one of the biggest growing trends in terms of revenue. And most of our brands aren't even thinking about it right now. So. By looking at data and you know, looking at behavioral data, maybe what people aren't talking about on social media but actually searching for, we're able to spot new emerging trends or, um, that offer a huge opportunity for brands. And beyond that, you know, wigs might be this massive opportunity, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're a good trend for any brand to tap into. You have to get the context. And so we're tapping into data to understand why consumers are searching for what they're searching. So again, CBD, our favorite trend. Um, when we look at why consumers are searching for CBD, you get more context and understand that it's actually tied to anxiety. And so while CBD might be this like, fun, great trend that's happening right now, there's a bigger underlying trend around anxiety, and that is actually this behavioral trend that is causing a lot of other trends. So if you don't want to get into CBD, you can tap into other ingredients that might be a bit less taboo at this point. Um, so for example, ashwagandha is associated with anxiety, um, and seeing what else is associated with anxiety can help you understand that bigger opportunity. So right now we're seeing it even go beyond you know, food and beauty, but even getting into anxiety tattoos, anxiety vests. So how is anxiety going to change the way you dress? Um, and these are all questions that we ask, for our, we ask our brands based on the data. So once you're able to understand what the trend is, the new emerging behaviors, we can get into those underlying needs and really identify those big uh, rising tides that will float all boats. And in doing so, we're able to help brands you know, think smarter, act smarter, and also act quicker, which is probably the most important part at this point. Thank you. Any questions? And you said, where, where, where do you get the data from? So obviously, Google has that advantage. Uh, but as a startup, you, you don't have the data. Um, so how do, you, how do you figure out those trends? Um, we collect like publicly available data sets. Um, right now, we are starting with like Google Search. Um, I think that we are aiming at developing also the data that we are collecting. But I think that today, the main advantage is not necessarily like having access to data. I think the way you frame it and the way you position it to actually produce actionable insights is really like the value that we bring, uh, especially to answer the challenge of our clients. And how ready are those industries, uh, you know, Vogue and others, to, to embrace this, right? Because Spotting a trend is really ultimately what um, you know, all those people think their core competency is, like make, you know, being tastemakers, trend spotters. Are they, are they ready to be replaced by the machine? So whether they're w willing to be replaced is a question, but I think it's happening. I think at this point we're seeing brands that are moving really, really quickly. You know, there are, we just heard there are 2,000 brands launching every day in beauty. And so they're acting on trends really quickly because they're closest to the consumer. And if you're a bigger brand or if you're Vogue, you need to 
Um, you need a way to be on top of all those trends, and using data and machine learning is going to help you get there. Microtrends and to the microtrends point, um, how actionable is it if, like in my mind, it would be very you know trendy one day and then not so trendy the other day? You were. Yes. So the difference between micro trends versus macro trends are micro trends are a unique um, trend. So for example, CBD lotion would be very specific to that. It could just be a quick one product, it could be, to your point, just a fad. And the way we look at these differently is understanding what is a rising star versus a sustained riser. And so a sustained riser is something that's been growing slowly but surely over a specific amount of time. It depends by category, to be honest. But uh, whereas a rising star is something that accelerates really quickly and then might come down, crashing down. So it's we associate them with, or we give them confidence ratings to help brands understand how to act on them and act on them accordingly. Yeah, to, to, to add on this, I think that uh, the analogy we give to our, uh, our clients also is that um, we're giving them uh, this, like n the, the numbers a bit like, you know, in finance, when you can pick up if you want to invest into like a volatile stock or if you want to invest into like US Treasury bond, for example. That's a bit like the same idea here. Yeah, and how on them, sorry, what I was saying before with the acting accordingly, um, how you act on it can differ based on marketing versus product innovation. So with product innovation, you want to think more long term, something that's safer. Whereas with marketing, a quick social media video you can do in a month, then you can work on with a rising star. Um, love the presentation. One, one risk to your model that struck me is that you might be overly reliant on Google data. And so if they change your access and you can't access the same level of, of data that you are currently being able to access, how, how does that change your business model? How are you um, proactively mitigating that risk? So as, as we were like mentioning before, um, we started with Google data because we are ex-Googlers. So it's a data set that we know pretty well. Uh, now that being said, we recognize the value of working with other uh, publicly av available data sets. Um, we're ingesting some data from Amazon. Uh, we're looking at also social media data. Ultimately, we're looking at building a predictive model. And so it makes sense for us to ingest multiple data from multiple perspectives that permits us to fully understand the consumer journey, if that makes sense. Hi, yeah, so when, when considering either your current base of clients or what you envision to be your future client base, outside of brands, do you, do you find your product to be a fit for other sectors? I'm thinking specifically of investment managers. <laughs> we get a lot of requests. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we get we get a lot of requests from media, so agencies as well as investors. Um, but our focus right now has been on brands. But keep sending the the request. We we open to talk, you know. <laughs> Hi, uh, great presentation. I actually have two questions. The first one is: I assume most of the trends you pick up from popular media, from Google Trends are the ones we already know that avocado is trending food, uh, Oscar Reiner is a trending fashion. How, what's your secret sauce of founding something the public is unknown? Uh, the second question is silly. Uh, why do you name yourself Spade, actually? Ah. <laughs> Which one you want to take? You take one? I, no, I, I'll take the first. The easy, you can explain the one. <laughs> um, so I think, I think uh, to answer your question, um, Every time we meet a client, we play this little game, you know, like is ashwagandha, kefir, or guava like trending? And people, even if they spend 20 years in the market and have the expertise, they're usually wrong most of the time, you know. 
And I think that ultimately there is just so much information out there now these days that it's really hard uh, to stay on the top of it and know exactly, absolutely everything that is happening. And I think this is the added value that we bring. You know, we help the decision making maker taking better decision with the help of data. Um, it's also easy to be in your own bubble. So just because something is trending in New York doesn't mean it's trending all over the US. And we do find trends coming from different places. So it's not just New York, unfortunately. Um, and so the second question, our name. So spate is actually, it's a common word that most people in the US at least don't seem to have an association with, but it means a quick acceleration of events all occurring at once. And that's you know, how trends work. It's all these different things happening at the same time to create a trend. And uh, yeah, it's one syllable word, so we went with it. It's uh, British English. <laughs> Trying to be fancy. <laughs> but I love how the URL is paid.nyc. <laughs> we can get the dot com. <laughs> You're bidding on it. Right? That's after the series. <laughs> uh, all right, I think we're out of time. This was great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.